Welcome to Bad Food Blog. I was in the supermarket today and I came across something interesting. Um, you can probably tell what it is already. It is so large that it can actually be in front of me for me to describe what it is. It is a George Foreman grill. Now, what's amazing about this one is, is it's the largest one they do. It is, to put it in their words, an indoor outdoor grill or an outdoor, yeah, an indoor outdoor grill, extra large. The world's number one electric grill brand. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Yeah, just in case, star, star. Um, doesn't say what the stars mean anywhere. I've been looking for, you know those stars? Uh, I, I can't see anything where it says the stars. So it's up to a three year guarantee on it. And turning it over, we have the George Foreman Versatile sustainable for cooking, suitable for cooking meat, ve fish, vegetables, and even sandwiches and paninis. It's a bit large for that, isn't it? Well, definitely, definitely interesting. So, this is what we have. Um, as you can see here, it has a gauge to view the cooking temperature. It has a large dome lid with a handle. It is a barbecue style grill to be used indoors and outdoors, can be used without the stand. So I can put it straight on this table. And removable, easy to clean, non-stick plate. Ooh, that's a step up from the normal George Foreman grill. And it's got an angled cooking grill plate so the fat is dripped into a tray, a bit like the other one. Hopefully it'll be easier to remove without grease going everywhere. Um, oh, let's see what it says on the other side. George Foreman is your meal for meat friend who can blah, 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 have knocks out fat and all that rubbish and a repeat of the branding. Right, so I'm going to change the camera angle a little and let's open it up and construct it. Is that going to do? Yeah, I think you're going to see everything. The packet is so big, if I use my normal camera angle, it might not work. I think I might add a bit more light though. I think I have, a, I think I have another light I can turn on here. There we go. There we go. Uh, okay. So opening it up, we have your only limitation is your imagination written on the top here. They've put a lot of money. Sorry about that, was interrupted. Here we go, here's the um, manual on how to put it together. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Um, it's got legs, not gonna use those. Will I be able to stand directly to the bottom? Sorry about that, people keep calling me and it keeps interrupting. Um, somehow it's connected Bluetooth to the camera and it keeps turning off the camera. It's very, 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 very annoying. Right, now that we've decided we're gonna have it without the bottom, we've had a look. The manual's got nothing in it apart from some instructions on how to screw it together. I have a screwdriver, so now it's time to take the parts out of it. Okay, maybe I should have taken those out manually. Uh, that's four legs. Those out of the way over there. Is there anything else that's gonna slide out? No. Uh, everything else is gonna come out with the... Okay, here we have it. So, uh, if I open this, it feels like it's all going to fall away. Okay, so there we have like the power part. Handle. Uh, stand. Polystyrene box. Polystyrene box. Grill. My God, that's huge. Look at that. plastic container oh, with parts in. I see this has feet on it, so... Well, this thing is incredibly simple. Oh, there's the drip tray. Oh, that's part of the leg construction. 
Okay, so it's essentially three parts, or four if you count the cable. Yes, that just goes in like that, above the drip tray. There. And then... Okay. Hmm. I just put, put the lid on the handle. Not too bad, eh? I think I... Right, let's do the screwdriver and get that part done. Although, to be perfectly honest, I would have preferred to have some washers for the screws. It's quite weird there isn't any. tricky to do alone. Oh. Pop the screws through. See if we can get them lined up with the hole. Yep. Yep. And let's screw them in. This was on sale. Apparently it used to be a hundred and something pounds, which is like hundred and fifty dollars. But I found it for fifty pounds, which is roughly about sixty dollars, seventy dollars ish to the American in the audience. I guess this would make King of the Hill uh, very unhappy because this is an electric barbecue, not a propane one like the ones he sells. The inside of this is quite well anodized and should be quite good as a cooking surface. There we go. Okay, so I guess the only thing left to do is uh, wipe it down and then show you what food I've got to cook on it. And I think I'll change camera angle for that one. So this, unlike any other George Foreman grill, it has a temperature control here on here. Can you see that? Pretty interesting. Zero on a thermostat. How oh, interesting. So that's going to be acting as an earth and a thermostat. Cool. Right. I'm not going to turn it on yet. I'm not going to plug it in. I'm just going to get the twist tie off of there. And that from there. I'm going to plug it in until I'm ready. Let's get a cloth. Wow. There's paint or something on here. Is something on here. Not like wiping away nothing. It's like pen residue or something. that part done. Now what we're going to cook. Uh, I think I'm going to change the camera angle for the rest of this because this is too far away to show the cooking. So just to make this clear this is how you plug in the power cord. I do not currently have this plugged in. So plug it in like that. I would always suggest that you never see. There we go. No, no light comes up. So I'm going to plug it in now. We're going to Heat it up and see what happens. Let's pop it up to five and burn off the uh, smoke, like they said. Um, 
Yeah, I can feel it getting warm already. I don't like, I know none of these will be live, but I don't like seeing exposed metal in there. I can understand why people are, that middle one is a, a heat sensor, I imagine, and appears to be earth as well. But this whole thing just, I know that it's safety orientated. It's just, it feels like you could electrocute yourself there, although I'm pretty sure you couldn't. I'm not gonna get a multimeter or anything, but barbecues are inherently dangerous. And so are cookers. And this is just a table, to, a countertop cooker, essentially. But what are we going to be cooking on it? Let's just uh, leave that for the smoke to burn away. I do have it on five, which is the hottest temperature. But what we should also test straight off the bat is what's going to happen to oil when it goes on it? Is it going to run away like it said it did? So. I'm not seeing them moving. Yeah, we'll find out. The surface is now quite hot. Putting my hand over it, it feels very, very hot. Oil's not smoking or anything yet. Interesting. So, what we're going to be cooking on there is some sausages and two steaks. Ooh, yummy. And with the sausages and steaks, uh, Max is going to have the uh, sausages and uh, me and my assistant will be having a steak each, which I'm going to have to do this bit with the, I'm um, going to have to boil off the butter in another pan and then pour it on afterwards. I'm not going to be able to, uh, the sage butter with her butter, I'm not going to be able, well I can put it on this and see what happens I guess. It's just going to roll off down there I imagine. So, in the meantime, we're also going to be having it with these, not chips, but Leon waffle fries, which I won't be doing in here, I will be doing in the oven. So, I should probably get these going in the oven immediately. Oh wow, that is getting hot. I can really smell that now. I've got to be careful not to go near it just messed up the entire middle of the kitchen. My preparation area is now a cooker. That's annoying. That oil still isn't moving, is it? Oh, I'm seeing some smoke now. There we go. That's what the Leon waffle things look like. Uh, they're going in the oven, which I will turn on. You will see that, that's gonna be off camera. 200 degrees, top of the oven, slam bam. Right. Now, the steak's gonna take three to five minutes to cook. And, oh yeah, we got smoke coming off. We have oil that does move around fairly readily, but there's no gravity to the middle, do you see that? When it gets to the middle, it will go down the hole. Right, I'm gonna turn that down because that looks to be too hot for what I wanna cook. Let's get it, it says it's around three. So it's gone to three. First thing I'm gonna cook, obviously, is the four smoky dogs, which are hot dog style things. And these are gonna be for Max, and I might try one as well. And well, I guess there's just, we just go for it, right? It's like using a barbecue. We just sort of pop them on. This is a ginormous George Foreman grill, isn't it? And if you'll watch my, put the packet in the bin. Oh, these are the togs, by the way. They are Taste the Difference for Smoky Top Dogs. They are hot dog style sausages, whatever that means. Summer edition. I have no idea what that means. Okay. Okay, so I guess what we do is we put the lid on 
to help them cook and reduce the amount of smoke going into the house and see what happens to the temperature, which um, I've got a feeling that that temperature gauge is in, um, how do we say this, American or Imperial, I believe is the correct term, which the Americans don't like. They call them freedom measurements, don't they? Now, if we zoom in, sure you can see there that those measurements are foreign to me. Um, I'm guessing somewhere around 200 is 100 degrees centigrade. Who knows? I'm pretty sure that that will be warm to touch now. Yes. I think that's around 100. That's where, you know, a bit more than 100. This thing's pretty slow. That's around 120 Fahrenheit. Maybe that's like 40, 50 degrees centigrade, 50 degrees centigrade, 70 maybe. I don't know, I don't know where. But what we shall do is we'll have a look how the sausages are doing. Let's turn these over. Oh, they're doing quite well. We've got some cooking going on there. Let's do them. There you go. Wow. Maybe so we don't taint the food. Let's do them all on one side, shall we? Or is that bad? I don't. I don't really know. Oops. Get me in the oil a bit there. There's things going on anyway. Put the lid back on. Right. In case you didn't see very much then, I didn't realize the camera was zoomed in. There we go. They've uh, kind of burnt down one side and not cooked so much down the others. Very positionally based heat, but to keep the lid on for a couple of minutes and keep the temperature in there nice and high. Indoor barbecuing, isn't it fun? Right, next I guess I'm gonna open the steaks and get them in there as well. Alexa, timer, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. I'm pretty sure the steaks are gonna take 10, five to 10 minutes to cook, so I don't really wanna put them on for a few more minutes. And my assumption that the sausages will take quite a while appears to be correct. This temperature three, obviously the aluminium was a lot hotter. So the cooking surface was a lot hotter when they first went on. I think three is a little low. Let's go up to four and see, see if we're doing any better. I was hoping sausages would actually um, bleed a lot of fat. I'm not seeing that yet, but I'm not exactly not expecting them to. Sorry, I'm doing this one in real time because, see, I don't want to just cut away and then suddenly show you, oh my God, I cooked food. And it's amazing is we have salad to go with this as well. So steak, salad and chips. Well, waffle fries, whatever those things are. Some nice smells coming from in there. I think next time I'm going to cook with this, I'm going to do it outside. This thing looks like it should be done outside rather than inside. Also, I think it's time for me to open these up really, isn't it? Because this is actually going to work, do you think? Oh, ho, ho, I managed to open it. Ooh, beautiful looking steak. Oh, another beautiful looking steak. Right, those garlic butter wedges can go on, can go on it as it cooks. They've got fat, you know. Uh, right, I'm gonna need another pair of tongs for raw food. 
Those are the ones that are going to be for the cooked food now. And, well, no, I'm just going to wash the other tongs. So I'm going to put the steaks on. First of all, let's season them. Season them on one side with the special pink Himalayan salt and some freshly ground pepper. I should open a window, it's starting to get smoky in here. What happens when you're indoor barbecuing? Ooh, apparently it's gone to 175 in there now. I somehow was expecting more. So we're getting really, see now the grill marks are getting too burnt on. I want grill marks, but I don't want them like that strong. So sausages, you're coming over here. Make sure this is all greased up. Things are taking a lot longer to cook on this than the uh, advert in, implied, you know, the box implied. Because it's not pressing the grill, pressing the sausage on either side, this is already a lot longer than the five minutes advertised on the box, right? Now the steaks go on. And they're going on with the seasoned side down. And then I'm going to season that side. Special pink Himalayan salt, first of all. And some good pepper, fresh ground black pepper. Right, uh, let's rinse that off now. Kind of want to sear the sides, turn it over, and then let it cook through. Is that side seared yet? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, we're getting good there. So that's one side seared. Sausages, mm, doing slowly. There's not much cooking going on, sort of. really do need to put the lid on to give this an oven effect because otherwise we're not going to end up with very much cooking here, are we? Okay, so let's turn that down a bit. Lid goes on. Let that get up to a nice high temperature. Interesting way of cooking this. Indoor, it's like outdoor barbecuing. I'm burning everything on the outside and not cooking it on the inside. It's quite stressful as well. Kind of this butter stuff I know has to go on the top of the steak and melt down. But what I'm going to do is wait till I turn it over the next time, then put it on and let it drip, drip all over them both. Mmm, smells nice anyway. Put it back up to the four. I don't know, three and a half I was happy with. There we go. Just going to check on these things. Oh, yeah. Those Leon um, sort of waffle fries are doing very well in the oven. Ooh, that thing is getting nice and toasty. All right, let's pull this back so we can get to that butter. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a spoon to get the butter out in both cases, I think. Yeah, let's go get a spoon. I'll sort of scoop that butter out and put it straight on top of the, uh, turn it over, put it straight on top. I'll do half on one side, then half on the other. I think 
we're getting there really. By the sounds coming out of there, I'm gonna to need to turn them. Oh yeah, yeah, we got some juices coming out, all right. Let's go up to the four. Move the sausages around a bit. Oh. Oh, a little bit more there. I think one of them had a little bit less than the other one. Can get rid of that in the bin now. I will of course review also uh, after this, um, cleaning up after. So, I'll leave it a little break there, you can go get a drink of water, and I will return when it gets to 175 again. I just had a quick peek, but time to go back in. I think it's time to turn these over. Oh, they're getting a... Uh, they're getting just past medium, which is where I want to stop them. Last piece of uh, thing on. The uh, sausages appear to be done. Whoops. Get that squished over the top. Wrapped all around. There we go, beautiful. These sausages haven't let out any fat. They are hot dog style sausages and they really are living up to their reputation. All right, there we go. Alexa, how long left on alarm? Your alarm is not set. Alexa, how long left on timer? You have two minutes left on your 15 minute timer. Which means the chips are almost done. Almost ready to plate up, perfect. And of course, get the salad. Okay, I really am enjoying this indoor barbecuing, but it's really just like using a frying pan, to be honest. I'm not seeing much of a difference between this and a frying pan. Very confusing me, it just appears to be a giant frying pan. Uh, all the plates are in the dishwasher. And they're not all going to fit here, are they? Oh, two of them are. One of them's on that chair over there. Out of shot. All right, just to avoid any cross-contamination, let me rinse off that. Put a piece of tissue and dry it. Oh, I got a feeling the steak is done, just the way I want it. My wife prefers it, or my assistant prefers it a little bit, cooked a little bit more. So hers is going to get a couple more minutes. And I'll just flip all of these sausages around. I like mine a bit more bloody than she likes hers. Going by the tension, the medium. Still blood pouring out of it, as you can see. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Alexa, 
stop. There we go. I'll show you those lovely waffle things from the oven. Here they are, lovely and crunchy, all cooked, just 20 minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes in the oven. Popping those on the plate. They go rather well with steak. And with sausages. Yeah, that one hit the floor. That one's done for then, in the sink it goes. I have another one just here. Okay, that's that steak on there. And then one of these hot dog style sausages goes on this plate over here. Unless you want two, Miss Millian? I want one. You just want one, yeah? Yes. What are right. you doing? Indoor barbecue. Why? I've turned it off now. We've got to let it cool down. The sausages are going to sit in there for a while. Mm -hmm. Tell the assistant the food's ready. Food's ready. Okay, and while I'm waiting, for everybody to show up. I will try my steak. Obviously this isn't the end of the review. I'm gonna show myself cleaning up in a minute, but that's how you cook on it. And it's not that much different to uh, cooking outside. And here's my medium steak. Oh, medium rare, there we go. There's mine. Mmm. Mmm, that's really nice. Mmm. Mmm. Let's see how these chips are. Mmm. Oh, amazing. Mmm. All the gravy coming out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely perfect. Look at that. What is this? Steak. Oh, steak. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. Mmm. No. Yeah. I'm going to go off and cook mine, eat mine. Thanks very much for watching. And I will show the cleaning up later on in the video. Okay, so now we're at the important part where we clean it. Hmm, this would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, not all of the fat drained into the fat receptacle. And uh, this is all in. Uh, these sausages will be ate le eaten later. Hmm. So, first things first, I guess. Let's put the sausages in the fridge. I'm going to cover them in something later. Hmm. Remember, I've unplugged it from the wall so I can safely remove that from there. And then I just clean this bit without getting any of the electrics dirty. Oh! You stripping fat everywhere. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Let's have a look at the drip tray, shall we? Ooh, it's got a little fat in it. Now I need to clean the inside of it as well because I've dripped fat on the inside. Okay. We shall go over to the sink, where all the rest of my washing up is ready and waiting. So, let's go over. First thing I can say about trying to wash it in the sink is, whoops, sorry, walked into the camera there. The first thing I can say about washing it up in the sink is, it doesn't fit. Clearly. Right? And I've got to keep this out of the water. Yeah. 
There's a lot of washing up off to the side there. Ah, so, I guess the first thing to do is to run some water over it. Let's see if I can use a brush to kind of get most of that out of the way. Well, it is a little bit easier to clean that I can bring it over a sink. Yeah, it's going everywhere. run that water a bit longer. It's so dirty I can't really see what I'm doing. Yeah, the sausages or hot dogs didn't make as much of a mess. Ugh. I can see where the dirty bits are that are going to need some additional attention. Try and keep the electrical parts from getting wet. There's no need for them to even say this is dishwasher safe. It is so big it wouldn't even fit in the dishwasher. Like every one of these grills, it always says it's a lot easier to clean up than it actually is. And the annoying part about this one is I don't know how. See, I can get close to the electrical bit. But if I don't want to get water on it, I'm limited on how I can clean that side. And I've managed to get some water on that part. Clean, clean as it's going to get anyway. And as you can see, I haven't got any water in the electrical part, but well, there might be some in there actually. Looking at that, I have to leave that to dry before I plug it back in, obviously. But yeah, mm. not too difficult to clean. A lot easier to clean than the normal grill. That was much quicker than cleaning the normal one. And of course, a quick go on the lid as well. It will have picked up some grease, as you can see there, with the water going yellow. And you just don't want, there we go, look, see quite a bit of grease has stuck itself on the side there as well. Just want to make sure all of that condensed, evaporated and condensed grease is off of the inside. Yeah, nice, easy to clean anodized uh, aluminium. Yeah. Back can go on the draining board. <laughs> kind of funny, right? Okay, and that's how it was to clean. If you like what I do here, please rate and comment on the video and uh, please consider subscribing. Bye.